Na'Vi back to back. They have a loss to Evil Geniuses at the Global Finals on this map. They are all. They are definitely. Uh, they're definitely not in the clear 100%. We'll just have to see which Astralis that we can get. We know that there are Trailblazers on this map, so there's potential that they roll over OG, but at the same time, OG are going to be in their comfort zone. Well, it begins with an opening kill from Dupree, and BK loses his head. And even despite that frag towards the A site, Astralis, they're going to continue on this journey towards B, which is exactly where OG would hope they attack. We've got Valda boosted up on boxes. We've got a man back in the dark corner. And Device missing his chance at a clean opening kill here. Montu just one frag. Always the possibility of a threat to push through spawn smoke. Valda holding for now does die to Dupree. And the last two members of OG both over on coffins. Whoa, Zipix, the moment he plants that bomb gets killed. Low HP as well for Astralis. This is not a bad spot for OG whatsoever. They've still got the kit on Alexi B. They have to understand that these remaining players are pinned to the back of the bomb site. It's just a matter of getting clean kills, which has happened both directions. Dupree! Ooh. The ace in the pistol! All five headshots. Looking like shocks. Oh, he plays around that box. So easy. Very clean P250 kills. And I guess we'll just get a... Straight up highlight reel of Dupree killing everybody here. The entry onto the site, the kill in ult. Really wonderful work around quad. I mean, love this oh. flash shot as well. So nicely done. In and out. 1 0 here for Astralis. And um, I guess the one thing that muddies overall, like uh, OG statistics on this map, is that they're on a three map loss streak themselves. Four map loss streak, in fact. Um, and that's five of six games, six of seven. Sorry, they're actually uh, one, two, bad. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've won one in eight games. So before that, they actually had a huge streak on Inferno, but of their last eight games, they've only won one. So maybe, um, maybe this will be fine for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just saw like your your hope and soul leave your body. Like their though. overall results not bad, yeah. but yeah. Please. I looked over at you while you were counting up those losses, yeah, Launders. Yeah, ran out of fingers. Yeah. I'd take off my shoes for that one. <laughs> a dire picture perhaps. And they got aced in the pistol. After losing a 14-10 lead in map 1. When it rains, it pours. All these things compile. It's enough to break a man. But can they break five men? Oh! Alexei just gets pegged by that smoke grenade. And eats the flashbang. Oh, the utility, man. Poor guy. Yeah. Well. I just have that tracking dart on him once they hit him with that smoke. He can only be within this proximity. Let's run through it. Flash has come as well. On the bright side, OG, they don't overcommit. They don't they just save the guns that they can use again in the next round. But yeah, the you know, one of the most damning stats for Astralis was the pistols, because you know, it feels like a coin flip sometimes. You don't really need that much ingenuity on a pistol round, uh, because you can still lose with <laughs> the coolest strat ever. You're limited on utility. So, you know, maybe they just weren't emphasizing like putting a lot of emphasis on what their pistols were and just uh, expecting to win about half of them, which I think is pretty fair. But then they, you know only had won 6 of 22 or whatever the stat was and uh when they won uh, and 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 failed to convert but when they won the pistol you know it was very common that they get the 3-0 start and they were winning a lot of their games despite having such bad pistol round stats so this was clearly a big problem for them that they identified and and solved at least winning two pistols here um in this series so far We move forward with all the saved utility and upgraded pistols. And Alexi will just not invest anything. We wait to get to the gun rounds. How much money for the SMGs? inside of the apartments. I'm a big fan of the 2-2 mid setups. Alexi leaving his post for a moment. 
go over towards the B site. Uh, no decision's been made, but um, I think it's a very, very strong spot for pistols to be in. Things can go awry very quickly for the T's. Dupree loves to get to this position and turn the corner. He's trying to bait some of the CTs forward. They do take the bait slightly, but there's a smoke that comes up in their face. MBK looks to try to get back as much information as he can, and he fails to jump onto the pallet or maybe just wanted to see if there was anything over it. But it looks like the A hit is coming shortly. Yeah, just waiting out the smokes, waiting out those few pieces of utility OG are working with. Alexi still hangs on to one smoke grenade, but he's over at the B site, so not going to be a problem. The problem is really NBK's to deal with. He has an entire team ahead of him. And only the 5-7 to work with. No teammate nearby. So jumping SMG works well enough. And the A site's open for the taking. This is the bomb plant, zero casualties, an immediate save call from OG. A bit of a boring round, but uh, that's what it had to be to minimize their losses. Just squeeze out those utilities. We've been practicing patience recently. Yep. And it works, you know, take a big deep breath. Focus. I don't think I don't think Astralis's play was ever boring, even in the end of 2018, 2019, or anything like that. I don't think even when they were at their peak, in any sense, was there. I, th I think you know, back in the day, Navi executing with 10 seconds left, that was boring. I, I think there was a couple of teams that were boring. I don't think Astralis were ever one of them. They always played with the right tempo. Yep. They changed it up a lot. Always they, active. Glaive was you know called tons of fast rats all the time. That, that was just a complete myth. I think that was made up by. Uh, fans who were tired, tired of seeing their teams losing, but didn't know why. <laughs> I think that's Fair. basically it. <laughs> didn't know what they were watching. I don't know what this is, but I don't it's like boring. it. It's, but it must be boring. That's all they could come up with. But, um, yeah, this is something that Zonic did mention in this interview before the game, that they, sometimes they're just not letting the round come to them uh, when they should. And that, that little bit of patience gets the rotations out of the A site over yep. towards B. It's perfect. Yeah. And it leads us this. A buy. 9 2 with the op. M4 is in abundance. It's a single kit, and OG sending four players early to the A site. We've seen them kind of forfeit apartments, and oh my goodness, check this out. Astral is five men deep on B. I would not want to be Alexi in this moment. Oh my god, this round is over. I mean, they could. I don't even. Are they even going to try to go for the retake here? They're in a weird spot. That deny, but it's all, all towards coffins. The plant goes down. Rotations will be here, but yikes! I don't know. Oh, oh, and device gets one through the smoke. This one, you just call it off, I think. Man, and even you know what's nuts is they're gonna call it off, and even then, Alexi, does he get out of here for free? If the smoke goes down the CT at least. Three SMGs to just kind of throw at this and take that risk. The moment you know they're saving, you can you can just run it down, dude. No respect. They Running up banana, no presence shown whatsoever. OG four guys A site off of the bat, and uh, four rounds now for Astralis. There's just no damage outs. Like they need to get. Uh, Alexi had to get some damage in, but it wasn't. He wasn't set up for that at all. They just had no. Uh, I guess they just had. They had zero fear that that was coming, and it did. So, well, that'll be a lesson. A lesson to him. Very easy round here for Astralis. Losing one player. I mean, they're saving. They actually saved uh, four pistols, I think, on the second round after investing in yep. armor as well. So the rifle buy was a lot less. So in actuality, I mean, like, money's not too, too bad even after it, buying up here, which is interesting. But uh, three I mean, rounds a, in a row. good call from Astralis. Like, you're going to take a free one any day of the week. Three rounds in a row where OG saved four guys alive. Yeah. That's just the right call from Astralis. It's just correct. Blade coming correct. There have been arches open. Four deaths of a potential 30 this in the last three rounds. Yeah. This is arch open and no presence down B. I'll come back to watch this. Okay, they set the trap. Top of banana. Nice grenades ooh, ooh, ooh. on the money. This is kind of like the big style of defense on uh, CT side. The nades from the site, the late honeypot trap at, at the top of banana. Not actually going there, but getting the impact. It's unconfirmed damage. But it is still damage that might have an impact. Nice blind shot from Montu. Spam through the smoke. Dupree down low. He dies to NBK's fire. All right, OG. Starting to piece something together here. Not to mention that unconfirmed damage still a problem for Device. 
Everybody from the offense still clumped up towards mid. They could round around short into the site. That would probably give them their best chance, as they would have to only take down two. Device lining up utility, and Glaive, he decides to just dry peek into the sniper scope. That's not going to bode well for the T side whatsoever. Well, they fall apart quite quickly. The timing shot from, Matt, uh, from Montu and all the early damages proves to be just enough to send them back Astralis. So they'll run out of time. No, I mean, they could, they could, they could barrel into a site if they want to, but 10 seconds left, two players, no chance. In OG, I mean, <laughs> okay, so like two rounds, we got four saved, then four saved, now five on a win as yep. well. They're set up well to uh, get back into the game with a round one there. Excellent pull to trigger while blind. Second one basically walks into him. No effort needed. OG on the board. Took him five rounds, but they got there. And I mean, what you're alluding to, the, the saved economy is so, so crucial. Montu's sitting on 7,000 as he just goes to replenish his grenades. <laughs> After winning one round. Yeah, that's nuts money. Money nuts. <laughs> I don't know why, it just sounded funny in my head. <laughs> Had to get it out. I wonder if a high tempo round would, like, the same one they did earlier on is, would actually cause problems for OG since they're not doing anything early. But Dupree about to walk into two. Let's see. Oh, damn. Needed Looked like that. a shotgun. Yeah. Takes him down. Magic, he's going to get blinded. Can't quite capitalize on punishing Alexi, who is just cheeky towards the corner. It's actually two players from the T is down to about half. Maybe they're just going to try to follow through with the utility and the push into the B site. Flashbang smoke comes down on the incendiary. They're still going to just try and trudge along through this. Zipix able to clear his... Oh, I was going to say a second, but he doesn't fire versus Valda. They're trying to exchange damage. Valda, the trigger discipline hasn't fired. It's NBK as he regains vision around the side of the smoke. Oh, Zipix with a double spam back the other way. And we're into the two versus two. Seven health here for Zip. Looking for the ace, as NBK just encroaching closer along the CT spawn. This gives a little bit of time for Glaive to kind of suss out the coffin side. Still nobody on that portion of the bomb site. Oh, Zipix, he's on for the ace. One more kill is what he needs, but NBK, he stops it. And now Glaive, he's figured it out, or he hasn't. Oh, he thought maybe, but he looked away, and that's what's going to cost him. Oh. This was completely won, and then we see this happen. Oh my god, the spray transfer into the back of Emo after firing off at Coffins. It's the entry plus a 2k spray down into the smoke. I was wondering, it felt like they were playing with fire standing behind the smoke, but, you know, sometimes you're on CT side, you're getting the damage off on the T players, planting the bomb out at Forest Oranges or over at Coffins. Uh, man, that's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty crazy uh, way to win a round here for Astralis. Uh, the Forte is all he needs. Zipix was definitely the star of that round. Big time. Uh, the hold otherwise looked good. MBK, it's like every time MBK has some, like, huge impactful play, it just, everything falls apart around him. Seems so unlucky this series so far. It's not like it's only been a couple of rounds. He's had a, has a, had a number of rounds where this has happened. He's done so much. Unfortunate. Now we see mid offered over. Nothing to stop them on arch side either. This is a great call from the offense. But at the same time, OG start to gather the information on Banana. And Matt just has to go gather that bomb. We've got smokes wrapping all around the A site. The CT's within it, obviously knowing that this could be compromised. Alexi's going to be tasked with holding on CT spawn. And there is no challenge there. In fact, Astralis, they're going to rock this boat back towards short. Issa and NBK inside of the pits. Let's see what they can deliver. They do have Alexi on that close rotate. Issa, oh man, he's just gonna try to fight apartments and it works, he gets one kill. NBK, good for a second. Oh, almost a third. He finds the headshot, but not the frag that comes with it. Another 2v2 post plant. Device low HP, no grenades for the terrorists. Oh man. But he could cut off Valda. Oh, he's waiting for that yep. too. My yep. goodness. Is this the perfect angle? Ooh, he changes angle. And that's what's going to ultimately cost him. Magisk, he could have just seen the barrel. 
Matsu's gonna have to eventually walk out from library, loses his head immediately, but Magus, I mean, he is very much locked into the corner. It's low HP for Volda. Magus no. through the box! Five round lead now. That is all they needed. That's insane. That's such an insane 1v2. The play to kill the player inside of library was especially cool. How he hid just enough. Bait that guy forward, came through, still standing on the box, so it was very unexpected that he'd still be up there if he was going to peek in this position. And here we see the second half of that. Montu gets played, and he finds a way out of this situation. Just as you said, it looked like he was very stuck, and still, he took that, that small risk and, and didn't even get punished. That is pretty nuts. Hit him with the electric slide. And Valda, the electric sprint down oh. banana. Second player, though, on logs. Didn't anticipate device, so that early man advantage disappears immediately, and NBK reappears as the second defender on B. This could actually bold in Alexi. He's gonna stick to the corner. Oh, but he gets hard checked by device, who now looks to go sprinting in, sees the grenade trajectory, just locks it down on NBK, and the B site has crumbled. OG have crumbled. God damn. And they're, they're just, it's like a thousand ways to die right now, right? We're just new rounds, new situations that are just all going wrong, and a huge individual plays from different Astralis members is the. The game versus big on Inferno, they they also forgot to uh, clear out logs. They get punished. They got punished so hard by this flash from Sears and Zantaris kill two. And here's two different players, I think, but you know, we got the same outcome with device getting control of things. The flash is bad, but uh, even just getting Alexi B to turn displaces his aim a little bit, gives device enough time to react. And even him on his 4-3 black bars resolution can uh, see Alexi be tucked into the corner, flick over and kill him. Oh, this is, uh, this is tough. This is tough. Oh, do they even get to save? You know, again, we've kind of watched that economy just roll over round after round, but if they lose both these players in pit, weesh, things are looking dire. Oh no, Issa oh. gets stomped on by Magisk. Seven rounds to one. Yikes. And uh, I mean, we haven't even, you haven't been, they haven't been tested to the point that like you get to see the interesting stuff come out, right? They're just getting dismantled all of these plays. I mean, I mean, they were like in a good spot in like that B situation and then Zipix damn near aces. That was, you know, a winning situation. Device 3k entry up B with a rotator through a smoke and bought a B control. That's just been, oh. Oof. Yeah. The hardest part with OG is like it's that it's not that they're it's like they lose they lose some games, but you can look at the game and actually look to rounds and be like, if you didn't make this easy mistake, you would have won the you would won the game in like multiple spots. But it's it's rarely like they got completely outplayed and then um, there was actually no chance like they got outclassed. I've never seen that be the problem for OG so much as uh, they just quite simply aren't coming through with the execution that's clean enough, or they just don't clean up enough with the mistakes and get, get punished. Of course, Astral is best team in the world at punishing. Nice slow squeeze coming out of Arch yet again. No bomb committed to this play as you see it now being picked up by Magisk towards spawn, and uh, they're confident enough to attack the bomb site itself. Valda in the pit with the Deeg. Gets himself one clean headshot, but then Dupree answers the call. And of course, while Alexi has taken over the T-spawn, Bomb is already gone, mm. not able to punish them from the back line. And, uh, you know, again, minimizing mistakes is what I feel like Astralis have done in a lot of these rounds where they have the advantage and they mm. know it. Mm -hmm. Played it nice and calm, just what we expect. This to me is like what Maniac had touched on right before we jumped from the analyst desk into the game. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, okay, they survived the challenge of I mean, OG on Dust 2. They yeah. broke through that second half. Now what we should get, theoretically, yeah. is Astralis just kind of, you know, speeding through OG. And, and right now that's exactly what's happening. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we need OG back on land is what we need. Mm. Uh, it's on land. That's yeah. a whole new beast. I mean, even Issa in like a, you know, a decent proximity would probably help, but... Do you have his... 
What's he? What what kind of ping is he working with? Is, he, is it that bad? Is he moved in somewhere? Is he somewhere like close? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Okay, that that's definitely not too bad. You know, device for example is a forty-two. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but of course having him be that kind of emotional. Exactly. Yeah, that's boon, the big one. As well as Alexi yeah. and like. All of them in person. They're just, I mean, such an in-person team in that regard. Go back to Blast London at the start of 2020. Like, yeah. Go look, watch, you know, pay attention to our loading screens here, dude. Half the time, it's Issa popping off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's tough. If it's not him, it's someone on Navi. But, ooh, poor guy. We spoke of the devil, and he just got blasted away inside of the boiler room. This is a gun round, and OG do have a, ooh, double man advantage. Turn back to single. Man, too. Swinging from the ropes on balcony has actually managed to get himself into the hallway. But you know, at some point or another, this bomb was thrown down onto Arch. NBK just ate a flashbang in its entirety. The rotate in the halls. This should be cool move. one that catches Man. I mean, Mantu should be able to catch him off guard with this. Oh, shotgun up. Oh, one player at mid. He clears. Oh my god, he actually might get cleared in this position. He's running away. I think Glaive. Oh my god, he baits him forward. That's a nice play from Mantu. You gotta love that. He couldn't find him, but knew they were close together. Made it seem like he uh, he was not scared of somebody close by, and then watched it. And the first kill he got as well. I mean, this is the second once he'd already slipped into the apartment. He should have been in pit at this point. Yep. But he was down there in boiler. It's like, what? It's well done for Montu. Very well done. The old bait and switch. V Magisk, but uh, the flick shot he, he lands down onto short, that was a clean one as well. Mm. So, you know, I think uh, Astralis had lulled us into a point where we were just kind of assuming that they were dazed. Gonna... I was dazed, yeah. yeah. But the OG era begins now. You were dazed, I was confused. Let's see. Five rounds left in this CT side. And I do think there is still this threat of the offense just busting OG's money a second time, getting double digits on this T side. God, you're such a doomer. Hey, man. But maybe Montu's just going to be that one-man army, because he's hit a lot of these shots. However, Volda is dead. And we've got a challenge over towards the B site. It's for that reason Montu's going to go sprinting over. NBK with a mag-7. One of the few that can make it sing. Clumped up is Astralis. Low HP for Glaive. And, uh, you know, somewhat tagged up is Magisk and Device here. So it wouldn't be crazy to think OG can hold this off. But Montu's going to walk right into the crosshair. crosshair Patience placement. is perfect. And now they're about to lay down the pain. Alexi, poor guy. Spam through smoke from Device. Not the first time Device has been such a nuisance over towards that B site. NBK's shotgun pops up. Dupree, he's pissed. And the bomb's still planted, Damn. so Astralis, they will secure a ninth. I mean, they go for the re-aggression. It's just, a, like, perfect crosshair placement from Glaive. And he's on, the, like, the left side of the, the wall as opposed to just over it, so maybe Montu's not even aiming for that exact part. Just really nice um, kind of angle holds from him. And uh, what's with all these I buy power stickers? He has four on this. It's nuts. And uh, Magisk has four on his red line. Yep. Is that new? They've got to be. Unreal. How much money do you guys think these guys make? I think they're maybe. I mean, someone's got to be pumping these skins to them. Yeah, they're, that's uh, that's pretty nuts. Um, I don't think like the way that Montu approached, he doesn't necessarily need to flash to make that play. Just really sick crosshair placement from Glaive. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could have flashed, you know, and then had him come out. But I think he just got destroyed. And then Alexi falls off of oranges, and they hear his feet hit the ground, and this is. When uh, oh the vice just starts spraying here right wow. after he comes to, it's not exactly sure if, if Alexi fell off by mistake or in what fashion or like how, but yeah, it's a number of times where the B defense has fell, has just fallen apart in both from both parties. It's never someone to make up for it. Oof, yeah, money's not good here for OG. Oof, oh the orange juice, it's all gone. Hmm. Water? Wow, vodka. That's crazy. Yeah. That makes sense. Glaive? I get it. All right, man. Seven-round lead. They take the tack pause. They don't come in with a buy around it. 
A little curb purchase, you know, less than 2,000 spent by three. It is a dire situation for OGCT side at the moment. But maybe they can do just enough. Maybe. God, you're so optimistic. Someone's gotta be. <laughs> Someone's gotta predict OG. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this is a, this is definitely not what I expected. So much fight from them on Dust too. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it just looks so. It just looks so hopeless so far. Well, I mean, don't, I don't know to... you know? Don't forget, it was a 10-5 half on Dust two as well. Yeah. Before we got that you know string of rounds from OG, the nine round straight. Um, outside of that spree of victories, first half wasn't much to talk about. So, and unfortunately, of course, it's like we just know the we know the context of Astralis on Inferno. It's now their T side that's tearing things up as well. Sure. You know, and the only time these two teams have played against each other, which was like, I think, halfway through 2020. A long time ago. Yeah, more than a year ago. Uh, it was it was this situation. It was just T sides that tore OG to pieces and, uh, you know, a little bit of fight in the second half, but ultimately what you'd expect, I think like a 16-8, maybe like a 16-10, just kind of fizzled out. Yeah. So I think we're getting a, a callback to what is a clear gap in the expectations and skill levels of these two rosters. MBK shotgun in hand, good damage. Two shots is what it's gonna take. And he had a chance at something further, but Device and Dupree combined for the entries. And while there is still damage here versus Astralis, man, they squeezed that one perfectly. Had that frag grenade found Device, he could have very well just died with no time to plant. Mm -hmm. The frag could have made a difference, but he goes for an unorthodox bomb plant spot. And therefore, no. No, a ret. It goes down. And so will OG. Now to the eight round deficit. Mm, yeah. Of course, they'll, they'll invest fully next round and we'll see what they can do to try to, to try to make something of this half. Could have made some money off that mag seven, but um, yeah, there was there was no hope there. So another really easy round here from Astralis. They clean up they, and they get out quick out the back of halls. Did you ever watch Better Call Saul? Uh, yeah, a couple seasons. Okay. Couple seasons? Couple seasons. I need to stop? Yeah, I don't want to show on TV, you know? Okay, fair enough. I got Danger Zone to play. True. Why do you ask? Um, can't remember at all. Okay. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> Wheel me, betch. <laughs> I've uh, done some digging. Zipix's gun is not covered in a bunch of I buy power hollows. That was a sticker bug. No way. Yeah, he just has a normal Asimov. But Magisk's, Magisk's fresh AK. That is... Wow. Alas, a gun round. That looked crazy. Okay, I mean, okay, Device has been hurt here, so they know he's here, okay. They kill him too. 5v4. That's good. That's a good start. Yes. Don't get killed from log, step two. Been a problem for them. I'm sure they're not gonna make a mistake of not clearing it properly. Yes, they definitely clear it this time around. <laughs> Smoke goes down, he gets some damage off on Magisk. Wow, even another nice. kill, 5v3, okay. Cool. OG on the comeback. Come on, finish strong, get five rounds. Get five rounds. Remember, the loser of this game does get sent down to the Blast Spring Showdown, where they will have to run all the way back if they want to make it to the finals to qualify for our World Finals at the end of the year. You know, we're restarting the circuit here this week. We crowned Navi as our champions just weeks ago for 2020. Of course, the showdown, man, that's a cutthroat event. Definitely. Best of threes, elimination every step of the way, no second chances, and Issa's gonna give no second chance for Astralis to get into this 13th round. He sees two players on short, mows them down, and he can smell Magus getting closer. Magisk with a knife out should be his next victim, but he swaps just in time, and it's not going to make a difference. OG with three, at least. Mm -hmm. At least, yeah. I mean, fair play. That's just no other way to better describe that. And they, they got the damage off the molly, I think, for um, for for a device off the corner of the smoke. Spam finish him off, and yeah, remaining three to the nice rifle work of Issa. Timeout's going to be called. It's actually from Astralis here. 
maybe to make sure that this lead is as big as possible, I suppose. I mean, I can't assume, I mean, things have moved slowly enough that I feel, and calmly enough that I feel like they probably got so much stuff that they could still fall back on. So I'm not exactly sure um, what the idea is, but maybe they've had a, a, a disagreement or confusion about what they wanted to get out of this round coming into it, but I'm sure that'll be ironed out quickly and we'll move forward. And as for OG, I mean, it's it's really just about just like, it's crazy how we get, like they get the opening kill. It's like, wow, okay, that's like the best card they've had in a while. So, you know, let's kind of build brick by brick there, get the opening kill again, then we can we can see if they can get something going. But um, Astralis, are, they're definitely going to convert the round if you if you give that up too easily. But they have a very fickle B defense, man. It just keeps falling apart. Sometimes due to utility, sometimes due to smoke spam. OG going to open up 5v4. I like it. MBK gets aggressive, punishes the alt peak. Looks like Magisk wants to follow up. A little bit of presence towards Banana. Valdis tucked behind sandbags. If Alexi can draw him into this, that'd be one thing. But Alexi just smoked himself off, assuming Magisk wouldn't clear it. And he does. Keeps his I, guard high. I think he just... Yeah, he smoked it off so that I Magisk would take his guard down. Like, allow Mantu to get the kill and run through the smoke. Yep. But Valdis stuck to the corner and just... Yeah, Magisk played it too carefully. It was just... Then there wasn't really another anything else for Magus to do at that point, yeah. right? Besides clear that out slowly. So that's one way to equalize. I mean, it was a pretty fair fight, right? Balda could have definitely won that. He's been pretty good. But now what you have is a situation where we've got, you know, attention on A, three players here, one in the back of the site. Alexi got himself up onto quad. Perfect. And he dodges the molly, but it doesn't do too much. He finds damage versus Zipix, but I mean, this is just going to be the tale of this 14th round, right? Like, we look at Magisk, 11 HP, that could have been Valda's kill. Zipix on 30, that could have been Alexi's kill. But coulda, shoulda, woulda, it is still going to be 11-3, unless they make this retake happen with the man disadvantage. They've got tons of cash and only one round left, so they might as well just try to throw this and hope it sticks. Molotov still left to potentially burn Device into the open. That's exactly where it's sent. Dupree tries to peek towards CT. And Device, well, he's forced off his initial position, but he's still successful in getting a kill. Dupree cuts down NBK. It's all on Mantu. And this op seems valuable to him. Oh, will he escape with it? Does he survive? No, sir. All members of OG die, and in their final and 15th round, they should still have enough cash for everything they need, so it's really not a problem. Another round. They get the, they get the 5v4, but then two players die on B. No, no refrags here. And here's the... It's just such a dry duel. There's no supporting anything. It's just this one gimmick of, like, let me throw the smoke down and pretend like I'm leaving, but again, like, it's all too easy. Matt just turns the corner, just keeps his guard up slightly, and then wins. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, Alexi can't get a kill on the hold. No rotations over. No uh, peeking mid to make sure there's no one there, so you can maybe cheat someone over. No gambling. No tactics. No hope. No hope. Damn, man, that's bleak. And sometimes it is definitely hard to... Oh, what? Whoa, oh, shoot. That's we gotta see that one. Luckily for OG, Valda will find that quick answer. But, uh, I mean, off of the mid pick, they're definitely gonna transition some pressure into the A site. Of course, OG rotating ahead of time. Bomb back. Astralis can just sit and wait. And they will do that. Yeah, they could. I, I feel like, you know, from what Astralis have seen, basically, they come late back to B. It's pretty much always open for them Ooh. to try it. Did he? He did see someone? No, I guess ah, not. Timing. Just looked away. But they're expecting some rotation here. And Alexi, keep an eyes on mid with a player right behind him. Almost found Magis oh, with his head turned. Or expecting it to be a kind of yeah. a B play, I guess. And MBK, will he survive? He does. But now it's all about Issa. He's going to find the player falling into pit. And the second. 
Issa delivering when he needs to. Dupree in the 1v3 takes a ton of damage from NBK, but remember, Issa, he's also tagged up. If Dupree gets the better of him, then it's a heads up 1v1, but Issa, big moment from him. Three kills inside of the A site to give OG a fourth. To